On this adventure with Look and Mew, we prepare the boat for a month at sea. Old one out, new one in. And we measure up for a new mainsail before heading off. That is a month of provisioning. Take a step, you never know what happens next until you try V belt on the start engine's just snapped. We've never had one break before, except for when it was in someone else's hands over in uh, Malaysia. Um, so I guess the longer term question will be: Is the new alternator putting too much load on the belt? Perhaps I don't know. But I need to get in there and fix it while we're at sea because we're going to need it for the two engines for manoeuvring when we get in later, later this morning. Got our tools. So Denise's clever idea was to write down what size tools we actually needed for the various belts. So in this case, we need size 13, 17 uh, socket set and size 13 spanner. V belt definitely missing. The question is why? So what I think is happening is the, the pulley on the Bulma alternator, the new one, is actually sort of a narrower gauge and what seems to be happening is the factory recommended size is then too wide and it's just wearing literally this size down to this size. So what I've done is we had a couple of belts that were a narrower gauge. They seem to be sitting the V better and not wearing the sides as much. So we'll see how that goes. There was a huge amount of belt dust on the engine, especially obvious on the new white alternator. I don't get seasick, but I genuinely feel a bit seasick after laying over the top of an engine inverted, replacing a V-belt while we're underway in a hot, stinky environment. Poor bastards, you feel seasick, I tell you. Horrible. On our lagoons, our lagoons, singular, there are these nifty little catches. Requires you to push your finger through in order to release them. Where the spring's broken. Would we call it flaccid? No, we wouldn't call it flaccid. We would call it the spring's broken. So, what we're going to do is we're going to uninstall that and we're going to do a little handyman trick to fix them. What we're going to need is some side cutters, Phillips head screwdriver, a Stanley knife, a baby's nappy pin, a new little bolt, and of course our uh, little broken jobby here. So the first challenge is these are actually sealed ends. So it's a sealed unit. So I'm going to have to cut those off in order to remove that pin. There's our pin and there is our broken spring. I'm now going to cut the nappy, nappy pin. safety pin to about the same length. Watch your eyes when doing this. It doesn't fly off. We're just going to use some pliers and tighten that a bit more to get a bit more spring in it. Now, this little guy won't want to go on easily. However, he's going on. So I've now got that on and that's tucked in under that little retainer there. And I'm going to put in a little bolt from this side. Because we killed the pin. Well, because the, the pin was a sealed unit, so as soon as you cut the ends off, it's no good anymore. 
now that I've got that little screw in, we can see that when we press on this, it'll spring back in place. Screw these back in. Now, will that lock in position? Yes, press a button, and out it comes. Fixed. And we have a dive compressor, which we've stored in here, wrapped in a tarp. It's not as watertight in there as we would think it was, so it's a little bit rusty. Quite a bit rusty, actually. So we've had this custom-made bag made from early sales. I just don't think it looks like the right size. Anyway, it needs to be fitted either way. So we're going to take the compressor out, put it in the bag, and then put it back in the hole. Assuming it fits. Empty spare diesel jerry cans. Kayak paddle. What's the hook on to at the moment? A shackle? Yeah. Yes? Yes, a shackle. is now done and packed away. Busy day of jobs on Look Commute. Um, I don't know what was behind there, but we'd already done that one. But these were all the things we needed to do this week. And we have bought a new fishing gaff. I'm not sure that's how you spell gaff, but anyway. As it was pointed out that we didn't have one because we threw it out because it was rusted. Uh, the letters is for the thing, which we have done. Uh, I bought a new snorkel because you can't buy parts for a snorkel apparently. Now we have a spare snorkel. Bought a new ring float because the other one was terrible. We have fitted the compressor bag. Jamie has secured the kayaks in a new spot so we can use the trampoline again. And he has redone the bridle and I sicker the outer window. It's a very productive little day, Jamie. So we just have to redo the Mori ones. And maybe the bridle, but Jamie's a bit angry about the bridle, so we'll talk about that later. Denise asked me for a new bridle. She wanted it one metre longer than the old one. I did it one metre, and she's not happy with the no, new no, bridle. No, no, I'm happy. It's just too long. I got the measurements wrong. Jeez, when someone apologises, take the apology. Nevertheless, she wants me to do it again. This is our old, well, our current life boy, life ring. Uh, which I've tried to repair a few times, but also it's got a ro it's got the wrong um, what's it called home harbour, home port on it. Um, and it. Sixty bucks to replace the whole thing, so I have magic. Do I spin around so we can use? I don't, because whenever right. you put the letters here, that's what makes them come off. Okay. So I actively don't want to do that. Yeah, that's better. This is the lining in our starboard V-berth. And it's been coming down for some time. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's sort of a vinyl lining. And it's meant to go up inside there taking all these screws out which has allowed a little bit of free play in the roof in the ceiling but not a lot so i'm going to try and put the tape that level and then get that in and then try and stick it to that with not a lot of hope that it's going to work even as i peel the backing off it's coming off the vinyl already Okay, you're up. I'm going to attempt to 
pull the roof lining forward. My <laughs> dentist sticks it up. It'll be tricky as that at least. Not ideal, but it's sort of stuck. I don't know for how long, but it's not hanging down anymore. It does look better. Lining's back on. Wait until it falls off again. We need a new mainsail because we've got to rip the size of a football field in the bottom of ours. Um, and we've done a lot of procrastinating. Anyway, we have eventually decided on who we're going to go with and they have sent us a very, very detailed PDF to fill in that's got thousands of measurements on it. So we need to measure our mainsail when it's up in a marina without doing any damage to the boat or setting sail while we're tied to the wharf. So here's what the form looks like. It requires a whole lot of measurements of things using words that we don't necessarily understand. Mine is up. Swinging in the breeze here in the marina. And we have marked leading edge of the sail there. And then we've also marked at intervals where the reefs are. And Jamie's about to take a photo of the sail up. Babe, see if you can get a good photo of the hole as well, please. There's our big hole. With our measurements complete and our deposit paid, it was now just time to wait six weeks for our new sail. We have a beautiful little circuit board up here, which is meant to show our water tanks and our fuel tanks and our batteries. So the tank one and tank two just shows engine batteries. Fuel one and fuel two shows engine batteries. The light switch, which is meant to illuminate this whole thing, doesn't work. And as you can see, uh, yeah, that button's just popped in all together, which I don't think I can fix. However, with the help of the uh, Lagooned in Oz Facebook group, they put me onto a place where I bought a new one of these. Jamie asked if I need to take a photo before I pulled it apart, but I'm pretty confident that two plugs which are different shapes and sizes, don't need a photo. So I will undo them and undo these little screws and see if the new one makes any difference at all or if it's just actually our, um, the monitoring things in all the tanks and stuff that are rogered. Old one out, new one in. Almost couldn't tell which one was which then, but this one's yellow, so I'm gonna go, that's the old crappy one. But I've also, Jamie, pushed that button back into place. It'll probably just pop out again, but hey. Oh, it says board now. That's interesting. Reservoir one. Ah, uh, still doesn't read tank two. And uh, nothing from a fuel perspective. Lights work. Uh, Jamie suggested that we just try filing the contacts to see if it's just a bit of a corrosion, corrosion shoe. difference. Uh, so we're going to file the electrical contacts in the actual fuel gauge, see if that makes any difference. But it's under the floor, in the fuel tank, very inconvenient. So this is our fuel gauge. These things you can't really file. So they're the actual contacts from the wires perspective, but they look nice and clean. So I'll put the little plastic thing back on them, if I can, and then we'll file the actual joins. Okay. So let's see if it works. Fuel one, that's Starby. Nothing. Fuel two's working, so that fixed fuel two's problem. And both the water tanks are reading correctly. 
so we haven't fixed Starby's properly. So we might go and test it with the voltage meter, see if there's actually any voltage coming through the cable. Well, we are none the wiser. Water's working. It worked fixing the electrical connections on the port tank, but Starby's nothing. So three out of four. We'll have to live with three out of four. We are going to Lizard Island tomorrow, which we are very, very excited about. Hands up if you want to get in the water. Me, me, me. Um, because it's been cyclone season, we've been pretty much stuck in marinas. Um, we've had a lot of repairs to do, which we've now done, barring the engine. The mechanic can't come for another four weeks. So we're going to Lizard Island, which is not very far, 150 nautical miles further north. But uh, lots of people have said that when you get to Lizard Island, sometimes the weather, it's still great while you're there, but it's really hard to get back. So you have to wait for a weather window. So we're going to prep as if we're going for about four weeks, food-wise. Um, but we're also going to get some extra fuel, um, top up the petrol, do a whole lot of bits and pieces just to make sure that everything's ready to go. This is the proposed path to Lizard Island. But we might do small jumps, might do bigger jumps, smaller jumps. Don't know. The weather looks like it's going to be really good after Queensland's had pretty crap couple of weeks of really bad rain. Um, looks like it's cleared up today and tomorrow should be even nicer. So hopefully we can get some dives in and some snorkeling in, maybe some kayaking. Are we excited? Yes. Did you love getting to <laughs> Yeah, it feels like the best job in the world, but it means we're that bit closer to putting to sea again, which would be awesome. Log updated, boat ready to go. We need to do two pages of grocery shopping, plus Dan Murphy's. That should take us most of the morning, potentially some of the afternoon as well. And then we have to get it all to fit in the boat. It's gonna be a real, real challenge. But I've cleaned the freezer out, ready to go. Well, we've eaten the freezer out, ready to go. So, fingers crossed, we can get it into the freezer. Let's go. That is a month of provisioning. Do you want a hand or do you want me to just stand here? <laughs> reasons that you might live to regret, but you won't know till you've made it. On the next adventure with Look of You. We're off to Ruby Reef, the Outer Barrier Reef out there. And it looks pretty spectacular. Makes a difference. <laughs> if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with your friends. So let this be our song.